Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make um, your uh, figures in your photos um, kind of stand out from the background, kind of um, so you can focus on the uh, the subject of your image. Say uh, this picture that I have here. Um, it's a, a an image of probably a model. I got it off of a, a free stock photography website, and it's a it's a pretty good image. And it's always nice to start with a really nice image. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the the uh, the reason it's nice to start with a, a really good image is because you don't have to adjust the uh, the colors or um, you know the uh, the to intonation of the the light and that sort of thing very much. But I'll show you uh, what I would normally do. Uh, okay, so I have it here. My background layer is locked, so I'll double click on that to bring up. Uh, my uh, my layer and I'll click OK to unlock it. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, and like I said, with this image, there's not a whole lot that I need to do. But what I would uh, usually do is create a new uh, adjustment layer by clicking on the uh, adjustment layer button down here. And I would probably do uh, I'd start off with maybe uh, a curves adjustment layer. And I usually just stick with the the regular RGB setting at the at the top here. But you can go into each different uh, red, green, or blue channel. I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, stick with the RGB. I'll click one point in the middle, one point at the top, and one point at the bottom. And what I do is I just kind of make a nice S curve and kind of a real slight thing. And what that does is uh, it'll bring out the highlights and the lowlights in the image. And as you can see, that has really saturated my image and uh, made it very contrasty. So what I'll do is I'll make another uh, adjustment layer. I'll create another one and I'll do it the same way. And I'll do uh, brightness and contrast. And like I said, since it's real contrasty, I'm going to just go ahead and take the contrast down. And looks like that's working, but not real well. So what I'll do is I'll go up to my curves layer and I'll just bring it down to about 75%. Now that's looking pretty good. And you can see that it has kind of just, uh, like I said, brought out some of the highlights and the lowlights in the image. Um, and that's going to help with this technique because uh, um, you really want your uh, your main subject to have those highlights and lowlights. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to click on the, the image of my model there, and I'll go ahead and rename it model. You can do whatever you want with that, uh, and I'll, I'll select that layer. Next thing that I'll want to do is I'll either want to click on this icon right here on my screen or press Q on the keyboard to go into quick mask mode. I'll then select um, a brush and I'm going to want it fairly uh, not very hard, maybe about 20 percent and then I want the brush size uh, pretty small so I'm going to go ahead and take it down to about 200 just for now and uh, this is a real quick process I'll go ahead and just uh, since I have a soft brush, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go over my entire subject. I'm going to try not to get too much of the outside areas. And if I do, I'll just go ahead and erase those with the eraser here in a second. But you don't have to be extremely perfect with this because... Um, well, I'll show you in a second, but we'll be copying the layer, and it won't make a huge difference. And since we're using a, a very soft brush, it's not going to matter a ton. Okay. As you can see, I'm not zooming in on the fingers or anything to get real exact there. I'll switch to my eraser. I'll erase just a small section right here. I got a little too much. Okay, and then you can, once you have the whole thing selected, or, or you know, drawn in in your quick mask mode, you can press Q on your keyboard or select this icon again to uh, see what you've got selected. And as you can see, I've got most of my figure here selected. And I do want this little area here selected, so I'll go back into my quick mask mode real quick, select my brush, and brush that in. And now I have that selected. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to copy this model layer. So what I'll do is I'll, with that layer selected, I'll press Control J on the keyboard. Um, 
so I'll just drag it into a new layer actually um, when I pressed control J on the keyboard it got rid of my selection so what I had to do was just drag my layer down into the new layer button here and it uh, it left my selection another way you could do that is to have had copied the layer first and uh, and then and then make your selection in your quick mask mode but anyway uh, I have my my copied layer here and I'm going to select um, <clears throat> my uh, layer mask button here to add a layer mask to it and what that did as you can see if I get rid of my my first layer is it it uh, it has the whole background pretty much overlaid on top of this first layer but not the model so what we'll do is we'll select that layer and we want to have the uh, not the mask selected but the actual image the background selected we'll go up to the top to filter down to blur down to Gaussian blur and you can mess around with the different blurs um, I have it set to about 15 pixels right now, uh, but you're going to want to mess around with that. You want it to look about like mine's going to look here. Um, based on resolution and, and whatnot, it's going to be a little different per image. But uh, go ahead and mess around with that. And then once you have it where you want it, just select OK. And right now, you can see that my model is very much so standing out from the entire background. And, and, and so much so that it even looks a little funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mask on my second layer. And I'm going to select my eraser. And I'm going to make it uh, fairly large. About 800 pixels it looks like. And I've already set it to an opacity of 50%. And what I want to do, since it looks weird down here by our feet, is I'm just going to draw back in some of this foot area. Um, about like that. And actually, maybe, maybe I'll even just make that a little bit more subtle by brushing back in some of that area. And what I've just did there is, if I didn't explain it well enough, is I selected my eraser tool and I selected my mask and I erased back some of uh, some of the original image. And with the brush, if you want to make it more subtle, you can brush back in uh, the blurred image if you would like. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to make my brush 25%. And I'm just going to kind of make a few clicks around there. So it kind of just subtly goes into the blur. And, uh, and that's about it. So you can see that I kind of brought back that area. So it looks like she's actually standing on something. But the rest of the area is all blurred out. Um, I hope I didn't confuse you there. Uh, hopefully you know a little bit about masking and, uh, and that sort of thing. If not... Um, please play around with some of your masking tools and try to figure it out. But this is the sort of effect that I'm looking for. Um, and I'll just show you uh, that kind of where I, where I came from. Um, this is what I have now, and this is what I started with. So you can see that this whole image here is real crisp and clear. But if you just want to make the uh, model stand out a lot, you can do something like what I did and then you can end up with this and you can see that the model really stands out here you've blurred the background um, you know it's something that you can use in a lot of different uh, venues you know uh, you can see it a lot of in in uh, magazines where they might be trying to show a perfume or maybe the dress that she's wearing anyway the sky's the limit um, it's just another technique that you can use in Photoshop I hope you've learned something um, I hope you liked this video. Please uh, check out my my blog if you're watching this on YouTube. It's Glaze Folio Design Blog. And if you're watching this on my uh, my blog, please check out my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash glazefoliodb. And uh, please feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and tell your friends. And thank you very much.